The Prisoner is a British television show that initially ran from 1967 through 1968. The movie 2001 A Space Odyssey was released in 1968. Both are mysterious puzzles, engaging and enraging countless viewers with their perplexing ideas, cryptic symbols, and multiple layers of meaning. Both also happen to be in production over much of the same period of time at the same place. MGM's Borum Wood Studios, and there is some interesting overlap between the two works. I'm currently working on a longer essay about The Prisoner, but it's starting to go off on too many tangents, so I figured I'd do a short video that looks at the show's connections to 2001, a film that I made another video about previously, and invite you to check out if you haven't already. After shooting 2001's crater excavation scene at Shepperton Studios in 1965, the same studio where Stanley Kubrick shot Dr. Strangelove a year before, production moved to MGM's Borum Wood Studios at the beginning of 1966. About eight months later, production began on The Prisoner. While most of the exteriors were filmed at Port Merion in North Wales, the bulk of the shooting was done at Borum Wood Studios as well. While both productions were wrapped in secrecy, it's been reported that some of the crew members and even a few background actors worked on both productions, which is reasonable as they were being shot on adjacent sound stages. Canadian actor and director Alexis Canner, who played key roles in a couple of Prisoner episodes, had at one point shared his dressing room with a leopard from the Dawn of Man sequence from 2001. A few important people who worked on The Prisoner went on to work on Kubrick Productions. Producer Dave Tomlin, who also directed and co-wrote a number of episodes, went on to work as an assistant director on Barry Lyndon. Bernard Williams, who was production manager on The Prisoner, went on to be a producer on Barry Lyndon and A Clockwork Orange. An early version of The Prisoner episode entitled The Chimes of Big Ben included a scene which was later deleted that featured Prisoner star and series creator Patrick McGowan observing constellations using an ancient astronomy device called the Triquetrum. The star field he's looking at was actually created for 2001 A Space Odyssey and was given to the Prisoner production. Another interesting detail regards typography. The distinctive typeface used in all the graphics for the Prisoner, including all the signage and the show's title treatment, is a variation of a font called Albertus named after the medieval Dominican friar, philosopher, and alchemist, Albertus Magnus. Anyhow, Albertus also happens to be the font used in the title of 2001's Dawn of Man sequence. This particular connection probably doesn't mean very much. I'm not a font conspiracist. Papyrus! But the use of Albertus in The Prisoner is worth noting, as it is the very font that is used in street signs throughout the City of London district which underlines the link between the oppressive nature of the village with the quote-unquote real world of London. The issue of technologically driven surveillance is a theme running through both The Prisoner and 2001. In The Prisoner, number six is trapped in a quaint scenic panopticon called The Village, where privacy is practically non-existent. Similarly, the astronauts on the Discovery in 2001 are under the ever-present watchful eye of Hal. They just don't see themselves as prisoners, despite the fact that he controls so many aspects of their daily lives. Here's one more little observation. In the final episode of The Prisoner, titled Fallout, written and directed by Patrick McGowan, there's a brief moment of gun violence, accompanied by the cheerful song All You Need Is Love by The Beatles. This is an early example of the sort of ironic juxtaposition that would show up in Kubrick films like A Clockwork Orange and Full Metal Jacket, as well as innumerable other films featuring violent images accompanied by happy pop songs. The only example I can think of that predates the prisoner scene would be the ending of Dr. Strangelove. Again. And while we're on the subject of the Beatles and Dr. Strangelove, it's worth noting that some of the aerial footage that was shot for Dr. Strangelove wound up in the Beatles' Magical Mystery Tour from 1967, but with a saboteur effect, reversing tones and adding colors, giving the footage the sort of psychedelic effect that would show a year later, better executed, 
in 2001. Much of the overlap in production can simply be attributed to proximity, as well as the fact that the British film industry was quite small in the 1960s, with a workforce of only around 20,000 people. Nevertheless, it is fun to speculate on the possibility of creative cross-pollination that may have taken place between two masterpieces born out of the heady atmosphere of the late 60s. Despite the often puzzled reactions that greeted both 2001 and The Prisoner upon their initial release, the stature and the fan base of each work has expanded greatly over the past 50 some odd years. Together, they serve as a sort of cultural one-two punch. A very slow, mesmerizing punch that takes decades for its full impact to be felt. I'll have a more detailed essay about The Prisoner coming out soon. So make sure to like, subscribe, and enable the notification bell. And again, thanks for watching.